what is going on YouTube and welcome back to Vancouver's Worst Drivers. Today I'm doing another dash cam review. This time I'm reviewing the Thinkware U3000 dash cam, which is 4K up front, 2K in the back, and it now replaces the Thinkware U1000, which has been at the top of everybody's charts for years now as one of the highest rated dash cams. So I'm excited to try the Thinkware U3000 and see how it stacks up against that one and dash cams I've reviewed in the past. You can also get $35 Canadian off the U3000 by using promo code Vancouver's Worst Drivers in the link in the description below. So what comes in the box? First and foremost, we have a main unit right here. Um, surprisingly small, I gotta say, actually. This is pretty narrow on the side here. Not too much material used on the side profile as well. And narrower than I thought um, head on here. The rear 2K dash cam on the back. Rear power cable. So in the box, it's actually pretty crazy. You get two power cables. Your first and foremost, you got the cigarette lighter power cable, which is standard in every dash cam um, that you can ever buy. But this cable is the same as hardwiring your dash cam to your car. So instead of having a hardwiring kit, you can actually just plug it into the fuse box and this is gonna enact power uh, parking mode. Um, great feature and I'm surprised that this just now just comes standard with this dash cam. So in the box, you got this plate, which acts as the uh, mount for the dash cam on the windshield. And what also comes in the box, which is interesting, is the heat blocking film. This is basically just a sticker you stick on the windshield near the dash cam. And I guess the idea is it's going to block sunlight from getting to your dash cam and trying to keep it cooler, which is an interesting feature. Think we're installation tool. In the box, you actually get a 64 gigabyte micro SD card as well, which is great to see. A lot of dash cam manufacturers have CPL filters that you can purchase separately for your dash cam. This one actually comes with inside the box, which again is another great feature to add, all coming standard with your dash cam purchase. And you just stick that right onto the main lens and it helps reduce glare for footage. Three of these little kit lips for the dash cam power cable. So for the rear camera, it does not move side to side. However, it still moves up and down depending on the angle of the window. And what's interesting about this camera is that they encourage you to move the camera on the side with a screw rather than simply moving your fingers. Even though you can do that, I guess this is a way of preventing it from being bumped while in use. And I also tested out you can move it with your fingers using the power cable. However, I would not recommend turning it too harshly. So let's take a look at the main unit here. Um, first and foremost, you have the words radar written right on the front of a dash cam to show it's got built-in radar, which is unique to the U3000. You can move the lens up and down like so. And then moving to the back of it, you've got the input for the rear dash cam. You have your power um, port here. You can have a port here for an external battery, which uh, you can purchase separately. On the side, you've got a micro SD card slot, which is pretty standard. And on the buttons here, you've got record, power, Wi-Fi, and voice recording. So taking a look at the main unit, you've got radar written right on the front to show that it has built-in radar, which is unique to the Thinkware U3000. You can move the lens up and down like so. And moving to the back of the dash cam, you got the rear dash cam um, port right there. You got the power port. You got a port here for a battery pack. So if you want to plug that in and then you have way longer uh, parking mode. And then moving on to the buttons here, you've got record, power, Wi-Fi, and voice recording uh, on off. And on the side here, you have a micro SD card slot as well. All right, so I'm just recording this video, part of a video on my phone, so my apologies for the audio, but uh, I'm gonna quickly show you folks the app and how it works. Um, I've been pretty impressed with the Thinkware uh, app. It's very easy to connect to. Right now, I'm not connected to the dash cam at all, so I'm going to go ahead and connect right now. So this is connecting via Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is always gonna be on, and you can probably hear that in the background. So now I am connected. 
And so you can do uh, live view or pardon me. So if you're accessing the footage, you're gonna have to connect to Wi-Fi. So I'll just show you the settings first under Bluetooth and then I'll access it via Wi-Fi. So first and foremost, you've got the memory card settings, pretty straightforward in terms of formatting um, the uh, micro SD card. You can change for resolution here to 2K 60 frames per second, um, or you can have a 4K 30 frames per second um, which I always recommend just keeping it at 4K 30 frames per second. You can change the image quality if you wanna have files um, uh, smaller. Brightness, uh, and you, at the bottom here, but one thing I wanna point out is the Super Night Vision 4.0. So I had originally had this enabled, and I did some nighttime recording, which I'll show you after this part of the video, and it was way too overexposed. So basically, there was way too much light coming into the camera you couldn't even see license plates if my headlights were shining on someone's car so i would actually recommend for continuous recording i would have this disabled um, i didn't try it with the uh, polarizing lens i like to have it off to show you guys what the camera can actually do in terms of quality um, but i'll show you also nighttime footage without super night vision 4.0 now on the other hand there's parking here which you have enabled or disabled for parking mode, I would probably have this enabled because it allows you to see people's license plates in a very dark situation. Um, so let's go back here. Uh, so recording settings, you can change the various recordings on here, voice recording. Uh, parking mode, I would recommend keeping it on radar personally. There's also motion detection and time lapse and energy saving modes, of course. Um, and you can also have uh, parking mode waiting time as well. Thermal protection here, you can have enabled or disabled. Um, I think this should always be enabled given that if your dash cam gets too hot during parking mode, you want it to turn off and uh, not damage your uh, camera. You can also change the parking mode set, sensitivities. Um, I wanna quickly show you the bottom here. So for parking mode, as I was gonna say, you know, Thinkware takes parking mode very seriously. As you can tell by the settings you can have on here. So you can add regular car, hybrid car, or electric vehicle, and that's gonna change various voltages where you want the battery cut off, which means the parking mode will shut off when it gets to a certain voltage so that it doesn't kill the battery and then you can't start your car. Um, and you can also see on there is 24 volt as well. I think we're also thought of winter time battery protection at the bottom here. So you can click these and actually protect your battery and it takes uh, temperature into consideration when it comes to parking mode as well, which was a very cool feature. Road safety, um, this is in terms of the radar that's built into the dash cam. So you have got lane departure warning, you've got forward collision warning, low speed, forward collision warning, rear collision warning. Um, so these are actually all cool features because I'll show you a video footage um, uh, after this part of the video, but unfortunately there was no mic. I didn't have a mic on, so you can't actually hear the beep beep, but this driver almost drove into the side of me and then the dash cam let me know that this driver was driving too close to me and alerted me to avoid a collision. So that was a really cool feature uh, built into this uh, dash cam. And finally, you got some, some settings, number of safety cameras. I'm assuming that's in terms of the number of radar sensors, um, but I could be wrong. If you know, uh, if you know, let me know in the comment section below. And you have, you have a speed unit, you got speed stamp and all that stuff. Um, Wi-Fi frequency, I would always keep it at five gigahertz to download 4K footage. Um, otherwise it's gonna take a very long time to download it. And uh, yeah, that's basically the settings. Um, if you quickly click here, this is when you have to connect to Wi-Fi. So it's gonna take a second there. And then now I have footage here. So you, you got to be footage either like that, or you can push this icon at the top here. Oh yeah, switching to Wi-Fi network. So now it goes from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi. There you go. So now you have the um, thumbnails of the video footage as well as the rear footage here. And that's all uh, set up easy to access right there. So that is a brief uh, overview of the uh, app. I like the greeting message that comes with this dash cam. Take a listen. Please have a safe drive today. So I learned some things doing this dash cam review that I thought I wanted to pass on to you guys. So when I was testing the daytime footage, I did not put the CPL filter on the camera. I personally like to test dash cams without the CPL filter to give you folks the best impression of a footage. And as you can see here, 
it's overexposed in the bright areas. It is quite bright here. This is now summer for obviously for us. So there's a lot of sunlight and I found that you could not see the license plates in certain angles without the CPL filter. So I strongly suggest using the CPL filter when using this dash cam. And then also the same issue when I ran the night vision 4.0 on continuous recording. So when you're actually driving around and again, the license plates are too overexposed. There's too much light coming into the camera, which is preventing you from seeing those license plates. However, I will say if you want to use night vision 4.0, on continuous driving, this is the Mary Hill Bypass, which as you can see, there's no overhead lights and it almost looks like dusk. However, this is pitch black. So if you're maybe say driving on a logging road or on like a back road with very little lighting, I would actually suggest running this setting during continuous recording. And just as a comparison, here is the exact same spot on Mary Hill Bypass without night vision 4.0 on. So it was disabled and a CPL filter put on the camera. So as I mentioned, I put on the CPL filter for the front camera, which is already included in the box. You don't need to purchase it separately and just sit back and enjoy the footage from the front and the rear cameras, both in daytime and nighttime footage. And I will see you in the radar section and I'll go over what those features are later in this video. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, the Thinkware U3000 has built-in radar. What does that mean exactly? So this is applicable to parking mode 
as well as continuous driving mode. And as you can see in the app section of this video that I did earlier, um, there's lane departure warning, there's forward collision warning, and rear collision warning, and that's adjustable. So radar is on all the time while you're driving and also can alert you when vehicles are close to your vehicle as you're driving. So as I mentioned in the earlier in the video, this happened to me where someone drove close to me and my dash cam went beep beep to let me know that somebody was close by. Here's another example of how this was this is applicable. As I'm driving on high sensitivity towards someone else, take a listen. Just know that it's a lot quieter in person than what you're hearing on this video. So Thinkware takes parking mode very seriously. As I mentioned, you have the OBD2 power cable in your box that comes with this dash cam, and that can enable parking mode without hardwiring your dash cam. With a built-in radar in the front and the back, you can also change the settings on depending on how close or far you want objects recorded near your vehicle. This can save battery power, either on your vehicle or on external battery pack, and can last your dash cam can last significantly longer when it comes to parking mode. There's also the Thinkware Connected app, which will send you a notification as well as the dash cam footage to your phone if there's been an impact. Just note that you need a mobile hotspot near your dash cam to enable this feature. So here's that graph I was telling you about. This is based on a two channel setup paired with a external battery, which is not included, but be mindful that you also have OBD2 power cable so you can at least plug it in for the time being on your vehicle battery. But these numbers with the external battery are absolutely insane. 20 days for radar parking mode, 40 days for energy saving mode, and to Put into context, I had used to have parking mode on my old uh, dash cam, and without an external battery, it was lasting about four or five hours. So, huge difference, and this is going to be especially important for, say, commercial vehicles if they're sitting in a parking lot for a long period of time. So, what are my overall impressions of the Thinkware U3000? I love it. I have really enjoyed using it, and I love all the extra things that come in the box, such as the micro SD card that comes along with it, the CPL filter, as well as the OBT2 power cable for parking mode, which for other dash cam and other dash cam manufacturers, those that's an extra cost. So I love that is included in the dash cam purchase. I also love the features with this dash cam. I love the Sony Starvis 2 sensor, which is the latest technology when it comes to dash cam recording. I like the Night Vision 4.0. I love the radar when it comes to continuous mode, say lane departure warnings or front collision warning or rear collision warning. I love that it's built into the front and the back dash cam. I also love parking mode. I think all the features are fantastic and you can tell Again, the Thinkware takes parking mode very seriously, and it has just been an overall pleasure using this dash cam. I also, I think for me, the biggest thing that I love about this dash cam is how easy it is to connect from your phone to the dash cam with the built-in Bluetooth, as well as just pushing a button to connect to Wi-Fi rather than going into your settings and having to connect that way. The only thing that I would add that I wish that they would change about this dash cam is I wish the buttons when it came to recording or voice or anything like that lit up and had an LED behind it so that you can see them at night. But other than that, a big thumbs up for the Thinkware U3000.